Hi, my name is Gareth Pronovost and I'm an Airtable consultant. In this video, we're going to be going into detail about the SendGrid block within Airtable. Now this is a block, so blocks are a part of that pro subscription, which is around $20 per user per month for Airtable, but in my opinion, worth every penny. I think you're going to see in this video how you can really easily use this block to, to automate a lot of the emails that you're sending in your business that are sent to specific parts of your email list or specific customers or specific partners and you can very easily customize that data and uh, fire off those emails in a very simple way. So let's go ahead without further ado jump on into this. I'm going to be showing you an actual example that we built for a customer that added immense value to her business and I'm pretty sure it can do the same for yours. Welcome to Entrepreneurship by the Numbers where we help unlock the potential of your business with data-driven metrics. All right, so there are a lot of steps to building this uh, block out the, the exact way uh, for this example. So I would encourage you to go ahead and pause this video as I'm moving along because I'm going to go quickly. So if you, uh, you know, come up against this on your own, just go ahead and pause it or rewind and uh, review any parts where you, maybe uh, I went a little too fast for you. But we're going to jump on in here. We've got two major tables. We have our partner table and we've got uh, three example partners here. And then we have a customer table. Now in our partner table, we have the name of the partner, of course, we have the uh, email of those partners. This is obviously important for uh, sending an email, so that's good to have. Uh, we have our partner view, which I'll get to in a minute, and then we have a customer link. And these are the customers that these partners brought to us. So the example here is that we've got a business where we have strategic partners that are in our industry doing something similar to our services or products. And these partners bring new business to us and then we service those customers, but they still belong to the partner, but we help. Like, so they, you know, the partner kind of outsources to us. That's at least the example uh, in its, in its uh, real life form. So that's where we're linking these customers. So the customer table is going to be kind of similar. We've got the customer name, and then we're going to obviously link back to the partner that brought that business to us. And then we're also going to track the progress of that customer. So we have all of these different uh, phases within producing our product or service. So phase one through phase five, and then of course we have project complete. So uh, we can just move that here. Now, the way that we might view this would be in a Kanban view, right? We, with a Kanban view, we can see all of the different projects that we have and where they are in the various operations phase of our business, and that's great. So if you have any questions about uh, checking out the Kanban view, I did, uh, I will include a link in the uh, description below that goes into, into how to build that Kanban. But for this, I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. And so using that Kanban view is great for our business in terms of moving our uh, progress forward. But what it doesn't do, it's not filtered specifically on the various partners. So what we want to do, our end goal here, is to provide each partner with a unique view that's only showing the business that they brought into our business. So going back to this master Kanban view, if we were talking to partner ABC, they don't need to know about the business that partner DEF or partner GHI brought into our business. So what we're going to do is create unique views for each partner. You'll see on partner ABC, for example, we're going to filter where partner is ABC. And so now it's going to exclude all of the partners that are not partner ABC. So we're going to go ahead and create one of these views for DEF. We can take the partner view here for ABC and just duplicate that view right here. And instead of being ABC, we'll rename this to be DEF. And in the filter, we're going to have to change this to be DEF as well. And now here, this is a unique view just for partner DEF. Now what we want to do is share, an, share accessibility of this view to partner DEF, but we don't want them to be able to change information in our base, right? Because it's our base, it's our workflow. We just want to let the partner know, hey, this is where these projects are. So in order to do that, we can click on this share view button and we create a shareable Kanban view link. And here we have different choices where we can uh, select different options for how much access we want uh, this, this uh, shareable view link to have. I'm going to keep it as it is on the default and I'm going to just copy this, uh, this shared view. And going back into the partners, that's where this partner view is going to be pasted. So now partner DEF 
can, if I click on this link, it's going to open up in a new window just a view for Partner DEF to look at where all of the different business that they brought us is existing. And they can't move it, but they can expand it to see you know, more information, what progress it's on. Of course, we've hidden some fields here, so, and this is all changeable in the settings. And so the purpose of all of this is we want to send them an email on a, on a regular basis that says, hey, partner DEF, here is that shareable link uh, to where you can view just the business that you've brought to us so that you can check out on the progress we're making so that you know that everyone's being taken care of. And so this is incredibly valuable. What we're going to do in order to do this, though, we need to do one more thing. And that is we're going to create a unique view of the partners that only shows the partners that have active business with us. And uh, when I go ahead and create a view like this, one of the things that I do is always include that stop sign emoji because I'm going to want to lock this down. If you are familiar with locked views, that's right here. I'm going to want to lock this down so that no one can edit or configure this view later because it's going to be an integral part of our automation and I don't want it getting changed. So what we're going to do here is build some filters that say we only want to see those, uh, those partners where the customer progress is in phase one through five. That is to say, if all of the customer progress is in project complete, then this, uh, this partner is not active, right? All of the, all of the customers they brought to us have, have been completed. Uh, the, pro the project has been completed, so there's no reason to send them this email. We can test that out. By the way, this customer progress is using a lookup field uh, that's going to look at the customers and bring back the progress of those customers that is appearing in this table here. So if we go back to the grid view on the customers and uh, we just change, you know, let's say uh, partner ABC, we see they've got Jason Bourne and they've got Perry the Platypus with us. If we change both of their projects to project complete, we would not expect to see project ABC on that special view. And here we are on the active partners. You see that they've disappeared. They're no longer included because of the filters we built. Okay, so that's how we lay the groundwork for this. And now we're going to get into the actual email template itself. So going into the blocks, you will uh, create add a new block. And when you do this, uh, you can select the send grid uh, block, add it to your base. And you'll see here on the uh, third section where you can sign up for SendGrid. This is the uh, email app that we'll be using. And this is where you can go to get that API key generated for your uh, particular use. Uh, then you will paste it right here below. Now I've already done this and uh, set us up on this to save a little bit of time. So I'm going to delete this one and we're just going to be using this. So now what we're doing is we have to tell it what table are we looking at uh, in order to send these emails. Well, we're going to be looking at the partners table and then it's going to ask us what view we're looking at and we are picking that active partners view. That's why we built it was for this particular uh, automation. And now it's going to ask us where is the email address field stored? Of course, that is the email field. Um, and then we can write the subject and the uh, message that we're sending here. And in this, we can use uh, the uh, different fields by including this bracket and then typing the name of the field verbatim uh, in between the brackets. So for example, this field is name. So we can say hi name and it's going to automatically populate with partner whatever. So we're going to just type them a quick message. Uh, thank you for your continued partnership. Please view your personal project link here. And here is where we are going to include that partner view. So again, we have to make sure that we get that exact. So we have to make sure it's just one space and then we've capitalized the letters. That looks good. Um, and so we'll, we'll wrap this up with a thanks. And now we get to click on to preview. So what we expect to see when we do this is that we're going to have two emails because that's how many different active partners we have. And up here we would expect the subject to be what we typed. And here it is. It's automatically populating with the correct partner name, DEF. And here is their unique link. 
and then we can go on to the uh, to the next one and we see the same thing. Here's partner GHI and here's their unique link. So it's going exactly how we would expect it to. All we have to do next is click send and there will be a quick warning screen that pops up that says only send this email if you're following these particular rules because we can't spam and that's it. Once we do that, these emails will automatically go out to the emails that are designated right here. So it allows you to do a quick check of your work before you send that out. And then once you do that, you're off to the races. So the way that this is really valuable is now, without having to go in and type this email up every week or every month, you, all you need to do when you're ready to send this is open up your block. So let's suppose this is your normal workspace and you don't even have to ever look at this active partners again all you need to do when you're ready to send that email is open up your block, go into this, make sure that nothing has changed, click preview, and it's gonna send out just to those active partners. And the reason that's so cool is as your business you know, continues to evolve, let's suppose you went through and completed a lot of these projects and now the only active project is with uh, partner DEF, you'll see that when you click on this base and refresh it, uh, that you will, well, actually, let me go back a step. When you preview this, now you're only gonna have that one message and it's only gonna be going to partner DEF. So it's all updating in real time, really, really useful. Hope this saves you a lot of time in your own business. All right, as always, I hope that you found that to be very valuable. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up on this video and click subscribe so you don't miss out on future content. If you have any customizable Airtable work that you'd like some help with, you can always reach me. I'll include a link to my Calendly below where you can schedule some time to chat. And in the meantime, best of luck as you continue to grow your empire. Thanks.